what's going on youtube welcome to west is angling we're at high haze today it's just turned half seven in the morning just wheeled all my stuff down to the peg on the barra and this is going to be our setting for today wind's blowing into me in this corner which as you know if you're following the videos i like all the conditions are looking good it's really cold though it's definitely chilly this morning winter's definitely fast approaching uh what are we today six degrees so we're well down into single digits now but we're still going to give it a go i'm going to be using a few different methods today i'm going to have the ugly stick out with a wafter on in the hope that we might pick up maybe the odd carp on that at some point today so i'm literally just going to cast that one out and leave it then on the other rod i'm going to swap probably between float if i can be bothered setting the float rod up and plumbing the depth and the feeder over to that aerator there now they're usually running and they aren't running today whether that's a bad sign or not or whether it'll affect the fishing i don't know we'll have to see but this peg's usually quite productive uh, we're after anything today after hide after perch we're after bream tench whatever we can pick up out of this swim we're fishing for all those species will take worms and that's predominantly what we're going to be using as a bait today so i liked the look of this tree here i think this looks like a really good perch swim on the float now i imagine that at this time of year it's probably quite snaggy underneath here uh, so i'm gonna have to be careful for debris you know I, I might not be able to fish on the bottom with the worm but we'll see we'll see what it's like so it might be a bit of a struggle fishing float so i'm not 100 percent decided whether i'm going to set my float rod up you need quite a calm day really and um there's always a bit of a breeze at high haze i think it's quite open the fishery but what a lovely setting it's eight pound for two rods and there's three lakes at high haze to choose from there's only me and one other fella on the entire fishery today that's all three lakes so far but you know what it's like at this time of year and when it starts getting cold it never gets busy which is one of the reasons why i love fishing at this time of year you know mid-autumn coming into winter temperatures are dropping and people would rather be home warm rather than on the bank like me and you know what <laughs> i don't blame them <laughs> but we're out here we're keeping doing the videos for you so i'm going to get myself set up i'll take you through some of the setup process i'm not going to drag it out and we'll see what we catch for you today right folks so first rod we're gonna get set up and get out is the ugly stick so i'm literally just gonna fish this out the way and like i said if we pick a fish up on it at some point today it's going to be a bit of a bonus so i'm literally just going to stick this bite alarm in here and we'll just fish it out i've already got all my rods set up in the new rod hold all wrong pocket lesty right so that's my feeder rod and i got that set up last night it's got everything on it even the hook link a little bit tangled up which you get sometimes when you've got them pre-set up like this but i'll untangle that in a second i'll just put it out of the way and there's our ugly stick so rods are out these are probably the two main rods that we're using today like i said i might fish float a little bit later on if i can be bothered getting out out plumbing the depth and all that if you're new to the channel i'm doing a little test this year for a bit of fun with this uh, shakespeare ugly stick so i'm just going to put a carp rig on this and a, a 12 mil wafter and like i said we'll just bomb that out probably straight out here i've got my bite alarm stuck in the uh, the ground there and we're going to be fishing feeder on this rod i've got a bait runner reel on it um, massively oversized reel for this little rod uh, but like i said just a bit of fun seeing what the ugly stick can handle if you haven't seen the other ugly stick videos there's a playlist on the channel so feel free to have a look at that if you want just a simple carp set up there semi uh semi running rig nice and easy nice and simple 
and like I said I'm just going to stick a cart rig on the end of there we'll bomb that out we might get a big bream or a carp or a tench or something on it at some point today and the other one is my feeder rod which I've already put a hook link on I'm just going to be fishing a small 20 gram feeder and I've got a nice big size 12 feeder hook on there uh, because we're going to be using worms so I wanted a decent hook got seven pound hook link and um, eight pound main line I think that is there's a little bit of fish activity I've seen some topping I've seen some swirls so all good signs right let's have a look at the ground bait that I'm going to be using today <laughs> so all I'm going to be using as you might know if you're following the channel I don't like to waste anything so all this is is frozen ground bait so if I've had a session all I'll do is I'll go home and freeze the unused ground bait I'm just going to mix this together I've just got some darker and lighter and look at that there's even some frozen dead maggots in there as well get it all used up before winter before the fish start getting too picky and the sweet flavoured ground baits and you can see the maggots there stand out against that dark ground bait there's a, a few two mils in there as well so a right mix of stuff and that'll be great in the feeder I might have to just wet that down a little bit seems to dry it out a touch when you freeze it but that's all thawed out so that's what's going to be going in the cage feeder uh, on the ugly stick just as a little bit of bait like I say I probably only cast it out once but I've just got some PVA bags of particles and that's all I'm going to be using bomb one of them out with a wafter and that's that rig done just got the carp rig out for the ugly stick it's just a simple turbo style Ronnie rig so that's what I'm going to be using with a wafter size 8 hook so it's not massive so most coarse fish will be able to take that I am using a decent sized wafter though I'm going to be using one of these krill pink ones and I just need to test if this hook balances that in the water because they are quite big those wafters so we just need to check that this sinks oh yeah that sinks now it's really silty at high haze so that's why I'm using wafters and the worms and the feeder rig should sit on top of the silt so we're good on both rigs there to be able to deal with that so I'm just going to hook my cart rig through the quick change swivel like that pull it into the end of the swivel it's got a little bit of rig tube in there that's just going to stop it coming out of that quick change and that's that rig done so let's just get one of these bags of PVA small one and we'll get this rig out and then we're just going to leave that one I'm not going to really dinner anything I might change it once in the day that's it just check everything's okay looks it drags fairly low and I'm just going to lob this out so we're going to be fishing that way with the cage feeder so this needs to go over this kind of area I think there we go that'll do us we'll just sink our line put our bait runner on put a bobbin on and there we go that's out of the way hopefully that's not going to interfere with our feeder fishing over here right let's see what kind of position we're in here for the feeder could do we going over a touch I can step over here pick up my ugly stick if I need to like I say bait runners on so it's not going to get ripped in what I might do a little bit later on is I might move the bite line over a bit because this still might interfere with my feeder fishing I didn't realize how close it was but we should be able to cast nicely uh, to that buoy there where the aerator is we'll probably just go to the left of it if you uh, want to know how to tie this feeder rig up it's really simple I'll put the link in the description and a link to the video in the top right hand corner now for you got our worms 
So I'm just going to hook the worm through, big worms these, and then through again. So that's our worm on the hook. That's, the, that's going nowhere that, that's going to stay on there. And then I'm just going to pack this cage feeder full of this ground bait and maggots. We'll probably cast out a few times in quick succession and then leave it a little bit longer. I've got about a foot to foot and a half hook link. Right, let's go. That's a great cast. It's just where I want to be, that, just to the left of that aerator. Really nice morning, actually. It's a little bit chilly, but still half asleep, not a coffee yet. Bloody ugly sticks getting bleeps already. Go on. Just using a one ounce tip with this 20 gram feeder, which is perfectly balanced, so I should see all the indications. Really light tip, really light rods to be honest with you, these Shimano Speedmasters. Don't think they make them anymore. Which I'm really gutted about to be honest with you because I definitely would have got a couple more awesome rods. Under this tree here looks really perchy. That's why I'd want to fish float. I just think there's too much ripple on the water today, that's all. I might try down here with the feeder, I could do that. See if I can pick up a perch on that. I'll probably leave that in five minutes recast five minutes recast just build up a little bit of a better bait and then the fish should haul them in on it with there being nobody else on the lake well actually i think this fella here he's just taking his stuff out of his car potentially could come on here but we'll see so that's been in about five minutes now so we're just going to empty that feeder our worm's still on Let's get back over to that same spot if we can. Perfect, so that. I'm not going to clip up. I don't think there's any point. It's a pretty easy cast. This little fish here. Can you see that on the GoPro? <laughs> I won't be able to net it, will I? Surely. I've got it! <laughs> I've got it! First fish! <laughs> Look at that! It's no uh, tail fin. That's why it can't swim. Oh, poor thing. It does usually start off a little bit slow when you feed a fish in. It takes a little bit of time for the fish to find the bait. Might even be late morning before we start getting bites, you know, when the water warms up a little bit. I'm definitely fishing in the right spot. Got to have confidence in your methods. No indications on the rod tip whatsoever yet. Let's put a slightly smaller worm on if I can find one. No oh, massive these. That will do. Well, folks, it is very quiet so far. I'll leave this in a little bit longer this time 15 20 minutes something like that and then i might try a little bit closer in just beyond this tree here we we'll just have to be careful of fish bolting underneath the tree should have had something by now on the worms though maybe the worms are a little bit big might have to uh could i have a try these dead maggots that are in the ground bait or i could go for half a worm I didn't expect it to be mega full on with how much the temperatures come down but I thought we'd have had a fish by now a little bit of a twitch that's the first indication I've had so far might just be a small eye or something tugging at the worm still the only person on the lake the wind's died off and it's gone really calm so that might allow me to uh, get the float rod out a little bit later on and we can try for some eyed in fact I'm going to start baiting up there I'll just put some ground bait in, just to drag some fish in. This top end is definitely more productive. Obviously the opposite end over there is the car park, and you've got your pay station, which is the toilet block, down that way. 
as you come in. I've not had absolutely anything, I've had one small indication. So let's get the float rod set up and we'll try that. I've just put the pieces together, this is how I had it set up in my bag. So just with the float on, no hook link and a couple of float stops there. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put a hook link on, it's quite deep in the margins here at high haze so I'll probably put maybe a two foot, three foot hook link on and then I can adjust the depth here then what I'll do is I'll shot it down. I'm taking a little bit of a risk by leaving my feeder rod in while I do this but the drag set really low so if we do get a take, which I doubt that we're going to do, um, it's just going to take line. Let me plumb it on there. Also be able to see what the bottom's like here, just out from this tree. It's a nice long float rod this. It's deep there. Very deep, wow. But it's about five foot deep there, just out from that tree. Maybe, maybe more. Let's see how that is. Probably about four foot there. Again, just trying to keep an eye on my feeder rod. <laughs> so we're still not, still not deep enough. We'll probably put it up another half a foot there, and we're probably on bottom that. Let's have a see. No, see, we're not even on bottom there, but we'll just fish probably just off bottom for now. And if we want to put it a bit deeper, we can. But that, see where my float is there. That's how deep it is, just out from that tree. So it's probably about five foot, four and a half, five foot, something like that. That sun is so bright. I'm struggling to see the float. Looks like somebody's, <laughs> looks like somebody's already got the float caught up in this tree, fishing pole. <laughs> I definitely don't want to be getting snagged on that, do I? There we go. Shame I don't fish pole. I've had a free float there. There we are. Take it with me. Right, so float rod set up. I've just shotted it down. I'm going to kick it off with some uh, dead maggots, I think. Now, if I was fishing and I wasn't filming, I'd have probably stuck to the feeder. But because I'm obviously filming for you guys, I want to make sure that I actually catch something. So that's why I'm changing things up and I'm going to try the float because I think we'll at least get a couple of hide. Just going to make sure I don't get caught in that tree. You have to let me know guys if you still want me to post some videos even if I don't catch on these sessions. You know, if I happen to blank, would you still want me to post it? So let me know in the comments below. Could be today at this rate. <laughs> put a little bit of worm on. Put another shot on as well. Let's uh, get back out. Float's sitting a little bit better in the water there. That toe's picking back up. Oh no, I've swapped onto the float. <laughs> There's a proper ripple on now. Car branch. Yeah, this might. This is probably the trouble fishing next to this tree. So that branch must have been pulling the float under a little bit. Oh, I'd have had a bite pretty quick on the float. The float. Oh yeah, here we are. Here we are. We've saved the blank, guys. What is it? Is it an eyed? I was just about to say 
the, the float has been unproductive. Look at that, that's a lovely hide. Hook's come out in the net. It was on the worm. Lovely fat autumn hide, that. Awesome. Right, let's see if we can get another one of them nice hide. And then I might swap back onto feeder. See if that ground bait's brought anything in. Always a chance of a big perch as well. That wind's picking up again. I might have to swap back onto the feeder in a minute. There's just too much of a ripple on the water. It's making it difficult. Especially trying to fish under that tree. I'm just going to be uh, getting snagged up on debris and stuff. So I've decided to come back on the feeder. I'm going to stick with the worm. And we'll see if uh, anything's moved onto that ground bait from before. Now that it's warmed up a touch. Might be that we have to leave it in a little bit longer for a bite. But I'm pretty certain we'll get some at some point. Today over near that aerator. I'm glad I made that change from the float. The wind's really starting to pick up now. It's a cold wind as well. Luckily I've started growing the old winter beard so it's keeping my face warm a bit. It's a really sunny day, but it is chilly. Really nice setting. Pretty much all the trees have started to lose the leaves now. High haze is a really good winter fishery. Um, purely and simply because it's it's quite deep and obviously the deeper the water the better it holds heat i still fish method feeder through the winter as well but if i'm fishing method feeder we usually fish um these two swims at the end of the causeway and you can fish into the middle of the lake during winter the carp tend to hug the middle here for some reason whether it's slightly deeper or what or whether it's just because they feel safer there there's less angling pressure i'm not sure but that seems to be what happens so i'll still be fishing method feeders all the way through winter um, you have to make a couple of fine changes you've got to leave uh, the method feeder in longer i usually fish them on bite alarms so that i can concentrate on doing other things and I'm not sat watching my rod tip. You know, if you're sat watching your rod tip, you're tempted to cast out more often and you really don't need to in winter. You know, there's nothing wrong with leaving your method feeder in 40, 50 minutes before you get a bite. I've just had a bit of a twitch then on the feeder. Absolutely bugger all that. So, Nothing wrong with that worm, we'll keep him on. And I'm going to cast out towards the middle this time. Which I'll probably have to stand up to do to avoid this tree. There we go. Try not to fall in, west it. will do well folks I could do one of two things I can either carry on as I'm doing on the cage feeder and maybe try um, some dead maggots on the hook or I could put a method feeder on my other feeder rod um, and try a small six mil wafter see if that'll tempt anything so I'm going to give it another 10 minutes. While I'm doing that, I'm going to set up the uh, the other rod with a method feeder on. And we'll see what happens. Cheap banjo feeders off uh, eBay. And they work out about, I don't know, about £1.40 per feeder. And they come with everything. They come with the inserts, the stems. And they're, uh, they're quite good. 
nice brown colour a little bit shiny but I'm sure they'll be fine so we're going to give one of these a go I think got nice short little stems on them as well cheap old banjo feeder on just going to put a uh, size 16 to 7 pound hook link on and we're just going to fish with a 6 mil wafter really scaling back there look all right them feeders one of our little six mils on these worms out of the way when the fishing's tough sometimes you've got to scale right back so all i'm going to do i'm not going to mold for this so i'm just going to squeeze some bait into that banjo feeder we'll put our hook bait in and squeeze a little bit more around the top just going to squeeze that in and that should be fine for the cast all them dead maggots falling off <laughs> and we'll go where we put the ground bait before Uh, let's see how we do with this <laughs> watch us get a bite straight away on these pink wafters <laughs> I genuinely wouldn't be surprised <laughs> that ground bait wasn't sticking to that feeder very well because of all the dead maggots but <laughs> well even the pink wafters aren't picking me a fish up see if the eBay banjo feeder can come through for us <laughs> we are in on the cheap old banjo feeder <laughs> feels like a bream there's a lot of head shaking going on <laughs> let's try and land it without knocking me brew everywhere oh god that was a long time coming that bite oh wow oh my god look at this <laughs> this just shows you how Fishing can always throw in surprises. Look at how beautiful this fish is. Look at that. How stunning is that fish? Right, I'm going to take this over to the unhooking mat so you can have a better look at it. Never caught anything like this here at High Haze. That is a proper goldfish. That is why you don't put your goldfish down the toilet, folks. I'm only joking. Look at how beautiful that fish is. That is well worth coming out for today. I'm impressed with that. Oh, it's a right little chunk as well. You see, we fish high haze so often and I've never caught anything like that before. But at this time of year, it's probably got a look in on the bait. Whereas normally the bream and the, the F1s and everything else will get to it. <laughs> but cool little fish. Let's get it back. <laughs> so a big carp crash down the oh no. Oh yeah, look at that. Massive carp crashing down the other side of the lake in the margins. Usually when they're crashing around like that though, I don't think they're feeding. It seems to be that way. If you ever see carp tail walking on the surface, uh, it always seems to be when they're not feeding. Slightly different behaviour to rolling, I think. I've done some googling and apparently when they're coming up in the water like that and crashing back down, uh, they're adjusting their air pressure in their swim bladders. So Google says. And Google doesn't lie, does it? <laughs> We've only had them two fish. Can't say that I haven't tried everything to get a bite for you today. <laughs> I'm going to swap over to the cage feeder again for a couple of hours. Just get back on these worms because I, I think they'll go to waste otherwise. I don't think they'll last till next week. So I might as well use a few more of them. I'm really surprised we didn't have a bream on them. Okay folks, so I'm gonna call it a day there and get packed up. 
I thought we'd have had a little bit of a better session today fishing natural baits like worms uh, but sometimes you just can't predict it that's fishing at the end of the day sometimes they're just not on the feed are they uh, but I'm more than confident that I've tried enough methods <laughs> I fish I think I've fished every method that you can fish today we've got a carp rig out we've tried the float we've tried the method feeder we've tried the cage feeder and we've only had two fish so I'm pretty sure I've done all that I can do to try and get a few fish out for you today we've not blanked at least we've had a couple of nice fish so I just want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next West's Angling